No one talked about the elephant in the room. I saw the things, the dysfunction, and I even asked about it as a child. But I was either shut down or uh, disregarded. Has your life, your dreams been interrupted? Good news. It is possible to reinvent our lives. People are doing it every day. And some are brave enough to share the struggles, disappointments, and challenges. If you are looking for a new beginning, a do-over, or to rediscover your passion, maybe even find a new one, then grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. Interrupted, Act 2, Reinventing Your Legacy, with your host, Coach Lori. You are hearing stories from people whose lives have been interrupted, and yet, They're using their stories to help others. Have you ever thought of using your story to help others by writing a book or creating a podcast? Well, then you're in the right place. Go to www.coachlaurie.com for all the details. If you missed part one, you might want to go back and listen so that you'll get what the conclusion of this story is all about. So we pick up where Leslie's mom has just left her dad. That she took action and got my dad out of the house. Even with doing that, I remember her calling me and telling me at one point that he had snuck up on her outside the home. And I remember feeling really afraid for her. And I remember feeling really angry. He kept coming back, trying to Hoover her back in or coming back, trying to get money from her. And I mean, it was to the point where she was rolling the window down, just throwing money out of the window, just go away. And I felt helpless. I wanted to be there and help her. Interestingly enough, when she had the courage to really cut him off, fully disconnect from him, that's when he came for me. And he started harassing me and my husband. He was calling us all hours of the night, trying to suck us into his drama and get us to wire him money and telling us all these crazy stories. It was really stressful. And and I remember having a lot of gut issues at, at that time. Because the body keeps the score. And I remember just really like just literally rocking back and forth on the toilet, just completely overwhelmed with anxiety at listening to my husband tell my dad off. I was like, oh, no, I didn't feel safe. I was like, oh, gosh, he's going to come after us. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can't believe he just said that. Oh, my gosh, he just said that. It's overwhelming. My dad never laid a hand on me growing up. I think I was kind of more of his golden child. I think he more kind of rode my coattails, like used my accomplishments and my experience for bragging rights, but then he kind of treated some of my other siblings different. I felt intimidated because I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, is he going to come out here? Like, it it doesn't feel safe. I think the thing that helped us was to set and hold boundaries. And I think that's what ultimately helped my mom was to set and hold a boundary. She had to call for backup though, to set and hold a boundary and to really stand firm on that for some people, it can take time. Everybody's different. Healing is not linear. And not only that, but what has happened to you over time can impact how you function in a current relationship. For example, one of the things was we don't get divorced or we always try to fix things or just even that it's looked down upon. There's cultural considerations. If you're in a culture where divorce is frowned upon or where you don't air out dirty laundry, it can make the healing journey take longer because there's not that support to really validate your experience and to be able to help you to feel safe in your body and to get perspective on things. So it can take a longer time. And for me, I had to sit back and I had to kind of let my mom ride it out. I had to deal with my dad to a certain extent. And I, but I think when we drew that line and even then he kept trying to push, kept trying to push, kept trying to push because he had always been able to bully and intimidate me as a child. My husband had to kind of step in and speak up on my behalf, put his foot down, like, look, this is my wife. We are not doing this. And my husband offered to help my dad, but on certain terms. It's like, look, if you want help, we will help you in this way, approach it like this, and you can take it or leave it. And he kept fighting and arguing, you know, the pushing the boundaries, pushing the boundaries, because that's what narcissistic individuals do. They'll push, 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 and try to get you to just throw your boundaries out the window. And so I think holding that line is so key, but having the support to be able to do it is so key. That's what helped me. I mean, having my husband there, like backing me up and in some cases taking over and laying down the law as a 
neutral party, I guess, in some ways, helped to kind of turn the tide, change the tone. It was hard. And then at the end, I think when my dad's deceased now, but one of the last conversations I had with him, I had to really fight the temptation to put him in his place. But I, I did speak up to him after being married to my husband for a few years. I remember speaking up to my dad and just kind of letting him know, look, you've said and done a lot of things that have been very hurtful and you need to hear that. There's the deflection, the denial, projection and all the things, the blame shifting. And I said, you know what? I understand you can't hear this right now, but I just, I'm just letting you know, just letting it marinate there, leaving it at that just for my own health and well being, and then disconnecting myself. It's not easy. I know I struggled with survivor's guilt after the alleged murderer killed his family. I met his wife once and she was a nice woman. There was a deliberate effort being made to keep her from cultivating relationships and to keep people from getting close to her with lies and manipulation and threats and monitoring to where we couldn't get to her. It's hard when that happens. Extending invitations. I see where my mom did that with my dad. She extended an invitation to him to go to therapy multiple times and he flat turned it down. And that was his choice. We extended an invitation for him to go into a program on our tab. He laughed at us and mocked us and blew it off. That was his choice. But I do think that family needs to be able to, or people that are close to the situation that could be potentially dangerous need to be able to read the room because there are certain situations where maybe you have to go about it in a different way. Going like diving in and going off on someone is not the way to go. Even I remember going to LA for a video shoot with the alleged murderer and some other people. I got there early, a day early. And the alleged murderer called me to see where I was and was lying to me on the phone. Oh, you know, everything's been crazy. He hadn't talked to me in weeks. And we were all supposed to be helping with this production. Everything's been crazy. California's on fire. LA's on fire. I was sitting there in a hotel in West Hollywood, Beverly Hills area. Sunny blue skies. Fires were like an hour and a half north. Everything was fine. I did not tell him that. I didn't call him on it. I let him say what he needed to say. And then I just very calmly and quietly let him know that, hey, I'm here, got in yesterday, everything's fine, it's a beautiful day, and I'll see you when you get here. I kept it very positive, kept it moving, but at that point, I didn't go in, I waited and uh, and revealed to him at the end of the conversation, that's not the case, it's fine, everything's fine. I think at that point, he realized like, oops, giving me all this dramatic testimony about how dangerous Cal- LA was with fires and everything, and I'm sitting right in LA, and I'm like, no. But I, I remembered what my friend had told me about, hey, be careful, he lies a lot, and a lot of people have been kind of backing away. And I thought, okay. And by that point, he discarded me because he knew that I was on to him. But I I navigated it very carefully. A friend of mine and I got together for coffee in LA and chatted about it privately. But he even told me, he said, yeah, he said not to tell you anything. He said not, he said he would do all the communicating to you. So there was all kinds of manipulation happening, but I was very careful in how I navigated it. And even in ending the call, I said, Hey, I'm at my destination. I'm about to pull my car in. Uh, I have to use the ladies room. I got to go. And sometimes we, we underestimate the power of even those kinds of little things in, a, in giving us enough time to disconnect and create that space so that we can then process or just even move, pivot and move in a different direction, get away from that toxicity to maybe process or just even protect our peace, protect ourselves. This is so good, Leslie. And I know you've done so much work and someone listening is in a situation. And like you said, sometimes it takes a while, but you have a podcast, you have a program to help people maybe navigate through that quicker and get the healing and the help. Can you talk about that? Yes. I have closure coaching sessions and closure looks different for everybody. Healing is not a linear thing. It can be very curvy as I've experienced. Closure coaching sessions to help survivors heal after narcissistic abuse, getting that clarity, learning about themselves, about their response to the situation or the relationship and the behavior that they've encountered and opening up, being able to talk about it, having a safe place to talk about that, or being able to obtain resources, being able to practice self-care and self-regulation because it's a ground up 
operation. I learned recently in a somatic course, when we're dysregulated, we only have access to half our brain. So we're operating at half speed. We have to get in our bodies first to even be able to access and get to the part where we can get into our thinking brain again. And then understanding, you know, where all this has come from, like I did. I figured out that, okay, my family of origin, I was raised by a narcissistic parent. I grew up in a dysfunctional family and a narcissistic family. Being able to reinforce boundaries, being able to define those boundaries and what's true for you, being able to protect yourself from dysfunctional relationships, even those interactions, even brief interactions, and then being able to educate and empower others to do the same is so key. Narcissists will not give us closure, but we can create our own closure, get on a path of long lasting healing. And that's over time. There's no timetable attached to it. I think when people try to say, Hey, get over it, move on. Okay. How do you feel in your body? What's happened to you? There's a lot to unpack there and not being ashamed to get help through therapy. There's so many different modalities, but not being ashamed to talk about those difficult things or what has happened or feel invalidated or feel like it's taboo or say that we're going to be judged and and not worrying about those things, but thinking more about getting back into the body, being able to tr build that trust within ourselves and within our bodies and being able to fuel our bodies in a way that's going to help that to happen, that's going to help promote that more easily I identify, navigate and heal going forward and cultivate healthy relationships that we all desire. Just the validation and that it is a process. It's not like, oh, I got away. But then there's that healing. This is just so good. Like you said, it's not talked about. And the few women that I've worked with have been in situations where the church the family, sometimes even the kids choose the narcissist. And so they set out on this journey to get healing and they get alienated. So having that support is so, so important. And I know there's times where the victim is like, it's not worth it. What I hear you saying is it is so worth it to be able to get healthy, get free and get access to all your whole body. So my last two questions, one is, what is it you really, really want people to know? Like I always say in my podcast, that you're not alone and you're not crazy. Know who you're dealing with, know who you are. That's beautiful. And also that when we take the time to do the deep work of healing after narcissistic abuse, then we can literally shake our family tree, forge a new path for future generations. And that's what's exciting to me, that my kids don't have to go through what I went through because I am teaching them, I'm sharing with them the hard lessons that I've learned and what I've been through, what has happened to me, and teaching them the things and giving them the space, the safe space to talk about the things that I was not allowed to talk about so that they can have healthy relationships within the context of our family, but also so that they can identify healthy relationships and choose healthy relationships prayerfully as they move into adulthood. And that's exciting to me to heal the trauma, to break those cycles. And then my last question, yeah, I always living... ask, what are you reading? Oh, I always go back to the... Body Keeps the Score by Dr. Bessel van der Kolk. And also too, Dr. Bill Sears has written a great book called The Healthy Brain. And I actually, that's where I got my master's certification in health coaching was from the Dr. Sears Wellness Institute. So I'm always going back to The Healthy Brain and reading that. And I just, it's not a book per se, but I just finished for continuing education with my trauma certification. I just completed a somatics course. And so there were so many nuggets uh, about somatics and just how to ground and get into our bodies and be able to use things like meditation and breathing, even trauma-informed yoga to be able to help on our healing journeys. It's not a race. It's not. <laughs> and I think more people need to know about semantics too. Have you heard of Gavin De Becker, The Gift of Fear? I don't think I've heard of that one. That one is what helped me when I got out of my 
short, narcissistic, teaching me to trust my instinct. And he worked with movie stars. He was a protector of movie stars. So he shares a lot of fun stories and then talks about the typical person that you can't say no to because everyone wants you to get a restraining order. And that's not always with the really dangerous ones. That's not always the answer. Where can we find your podcast, The Vibrant Survivor? Yes, I'm on all the platforms, Apple, Spotify, Google, The Vibrant Survivor. I upload episodes weekly on Friday mornings. That's where you can find me. And then also you can find me on Instagram at The Vibrant Survivor. Of course, I'm at I am Leslie Kane. I look forward to meeting you. And I would say to anyone who has had an awakening or a revelation or felt validated to go and if anything, listen to the podcast, but go and get get an appointment, get some help, get support because this is serious and anybody can end up in a situation with a narcissist. And it's like the best thing is to find out how to help healthily and helpfully get get away, get distance and get support. Yes. And obviously there are going to be situations where you can't easily get away, but there's more than one way to disconnect. Even in a brief interaction with someone, you can disconnect emotionally. You can either use your voice or you can use your silence to disconnect. It doesn't have to be this dramatic big thing. There's more than one way to do that. If you see even in in little interactions or little conversations where things are going sideways or south, there's different ways to disconnect. I'm all about brainstorming and, and looking for those kinds of opportunities because it's not easy to do that. Say if it's, if it's a coworker or a boss and you've got to deal with them on the job, you've got to figure out how to navigate those situations. There's things that you can do with language and just with your physical presence or with silence that can help you to get through. And then ultimately at some point we all have to evaluate. I know I have evaluate. Okay. Does this, is this person or is this relationship, regardless of the nature of the relationship, is it in alignment with my values? It's not always possible to get away, especially with if it's a coworker or a family member or even a neighbor. Sometimes we have to be creative in the way that we navigate those kinds of things. And there are little things that we can do through our physical presence or through like small gestures or language or even silence at an appropriate time or healthy diversions to be able to create space to then be able to kind of step back, evaluate the situation, maybe even process, even heal from those little micro interactions, microaggressions that may be happening, say in the case of a job situation or with a neighbor, et cetera, or in the context of a friend group, and then be able to put things into perspective and continue on. But ultimately, at some point in time, I know for me, I've, I've had to, in some cases, whether it's in corporate or in friend groups, I've had to evaluate, okay, does this situation or does this relationship align with my values? Is Does this align with who I am and who I want to be, where I want to be? Again, family is family, It's but we can put boundaries in place, put healthy boundaries in place, say on the job, in family, in our neighborhoods, and those situations that are not as easy to get away from, or that we may choose to stay in for whatever reason. Whatever those reasons are, there are reasons. There are as to to have, (laughs) to have and to hold, but there are ways to, to navigate so that we can keep moving forward within the context of those situations to whatever end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Do you have brain fog? Are you exhausted all the time? Do you struggle with depression? How about cravings? Imagine an enzyme that turns sugar into fiber. For a link to order your bottle, email me at lacoach at comcast.net. That's L-A-C-O-A-C-H at comcast.net. We learned so much from Leslie about being the victim of a narcissist, that maybe our job isn't always to get away depending on the situation, but there is help. You are not crazy and you are not alone. There is hope. If you love this podcast, here's a big ask. Will you share with your friends and family? Subscribe, give us a review, and a five-star rating so that others looking to reinvent their lives will be able to get the help they're looking for. 
Thank you in advance.